If you have anxiety, have you ever wondered why you can't connect with other people? Have you ever wondered why can't I just be calm? Why can't I just talk to this person and connect with them? Well, chances are you're probably gone into something called defensive detachment. And I want to talk about that today, about why we defend ourselves, but at the same time alienate ourselves. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Hi and welcome to the Anxiety MD, a channel I created to give you the best possible information to help you overcome anxiety. My name is Dr. Russ Kennedy. I am the Anxiety MD. I'm a medical doctor who also struggled with anxiety for many, many years. And today I want to talk about defensive detachment. I'll start off with a little story. Many decades ago, they used to have this policy in the hospital that the adults, the parents, could not visit their children if they had a surgery because what they noticed was when the child's parents wanted to leave after a visit, the child would lose his frickin' mind. He would just, or she would just panic and start freaking out. So what the hospitals did was they stopped parents from coming in and visiting their children because it just created too much disruption. And it wound up working, at least on the surface, because these kids became a lot easier to handle. They became a lot less active, they shut down. And what happened was they went into defensive detachment, which is when you feel that your caregivers are not present for you, you will start protecting yourself by just shutting yourself off, creating a wall around yourself. And what they found was when the parents came back to see the kids, the kids weren't that happy to see them. Actually, some of them got really angry at the parents because they had gone into this defensive detachment and they had learned to keep themselves into this shut down, shielded, wounded mode, which made them easier to be cared for by the nursing staff, but also created a lot of trauma within them. So that's not too far away from what happens to a lot of us in our families when our caregivers really aren't there for us. So if you feel that your caregiver isn't there for you as a child, even if it's intermittent, even if they're like an alcoholic who goes into rages or binges or someone who's sick periodically and just keeps disappearing, we will go into what's called defensive detachment. So to protect ourselves, we prevent being too close or too connected to those people because being connected to those people when it gets withdrawn is just too painful. So we go into this process called defensive detachment. And many of us can stay in that defensive detachment for our whole lives because it feels in a way safer to keep ourselves shielded. But when we shield ourselves from that, we shield ourselves from life in general. And the way to get around defensive detachment is first be aware of it. If you're in an argument with your spouse or you're having a problem with your kids and you feel like you want to withdraw, just realize that maybe I'm going into defensive detachment. Just say to yourself, I think I'm going into defensive detachment here. And just the awareness that that's what you're doing allows you to go, okay, how can I pull myself out of defensive detachment? How can I ground myself, take a few breaths, be connected with myself, get back into connection with other people, and then interact with them? Because if you withdraw, and if you go off into defensive detachment, it's really, really hard in your relationships. So maybe this clears up some reasons why when you are faced with a relationship issue that you withdraw, which is a natural response if your caregivers weren't there for you when you were a child. So don't let your past dictate your present happiness. Don't let that defensive detachment really affect your relationships today because it really will if you give it a chance. So if you feel yourself pulling back, then ground yourself. Put your hands on your chest, take a deep breath, feel your feet on the floor. Just ground yourself and ask yourself, do I really need to detach right now? Can I, how can I remain connected to this person? Even though you may be arguing with them or even though you may be pissed off with your kids, but how can I connect with them? Because preserving the attachment is key to your happiness in life and also key to dropping that anxiety. Because the more connected we are to other people, the less anxious we feel. 
So I hope you like this video. If you do, please like and subscribe. Please feel free to comment in the section below. And in the meantime, till I see you again, don't believe everything you think.